Yep, Libby, you got that right. This was a topic begging to be tackled, so I'll be rising to the challenge and asking, Kekena Pep and Okadas, a necessary evil? On February 1st, 2020, the Lagos state government rolled out its policy to restrict Kekes and Okadas away from major highways onto secondary or collector roads. And the impression was that this was a largely unpopular move. No one is impressed with the typically insensitive and disconnected way government marshals out disruptive change. However, putting sentiment aside, the issues are these. The restriction in question is already an existing law. In other words, it had passed through all the existing protocols of proposed bill, consultation with stakeholders, and debate in the House of Assembly before it was passed into law. Now it's law. Someone Lu was merely jump-starting its enforcement, and some people would say, it's high time too. Kekes and Okadas have become a lawless menace on the roads, with a record number of accidents resulting in admissions at hospitals. According to Boenga Motoshaw, Commissioner for Information and Strategy, from 2016 to 2019, there were over 10,000 accidents recorded at the general hospitals alone. This number excludes unreported cases and those recorded by other hospitals. The total number of deaths from reported cases is over 600 as of date. So whilst we argue on the necessities for Kekes and Okadas, let us weigh into the debate the fact that there are widows and some fatherless and even motherless children who will testify to the real cost of the Okadas and Keke hazard. The volume and growing influx of Akadas and the unskilled men that ride them, who flood the already, and women, the already um, flooded market, ensure that the policing of this menace is well nigh impossible. Since before the ban, there was an estimated 2 million cars, over 500,000 Akadas, and another possible 200,000 uh, Kekes to just 4,000 police officers. Kekes and Okadas cannot be the solution to the employment of our teeming, uneducated, and unskilled workforce. In addition to the loss of limb and life, there is the proven correlation between the presence of Okadas, Kekes, and increased crime, as the states that have enforced the ban of such vehicles have documented a 70% drop in crime rates. Conversely, whilst we continue to manage a poor substitute, and I mean poor, the real deal will never emerge, as the same government we look to to supply quality public transport will have the excuse, as always, that we're yet again subs subsidizing the absence of the same. Clearly, there is a need to get creative in solving our transport problems. A standard restriction could still allow for a renegotiation of the policy enforcement that would permit a select registered and regulated motorbike users, but not the free for all that exists now in the name of necessity. It's time to hold our government accountable, as, as we keep saying, both at the state and federal level for the investment and infrastructure that is due us Legotians and Nigerians deserve a more efficient and safe transport system that is truly reflective of the megacity and giant of Africa. Okadas and Kekes are not going to take us to the promised land. If there's such a thing as a necessary evil, then the retention of Kekes and Okadas would still short, fall short of that merit list. But nah, there ain't such a thing. Uh, uh, Kenya, well, please, I would plead with you. You won't say anything on this. No, I will, I'll hold my peace. Yeah. I'll try. Yeah. I, I can't promise time. anything. I'll try. Please, permit me. I'll try. Nobody ordinarily, no graduate Let ordinarily would team. want to ride Okada. Like we say, it is that opening created by the lack of, you know, opportunities or facilities mm -hmm. that will make people... Well, growing up, Okadas were not... Nobody... Mm -hmm. We didn't know Okada. Mm -hmm. We knew taxis. We knew mm -hmm. buses. Yeah public transport, and we we're okay. But after some time, Okada came up. I remember when they started, it was 50 Kobo, you know, in some cases, one Naira. But today, it has become what it is. Government, unfortunately, you said something. Government will not think outside the box. Yes, what led to this? How do we ensure that we curb this or we solve the problem so we don't have a recurring? You pass a law, and then you restrict. This is not the first time they are restricting. But during election, they mm -hmm. donated Okadas mm -hmm. and helmet to these same people because they used them for election. After the election, you come back with this. You're recycling. In London, I'm running out quickly. In London, you have trains. You have buses. You can determine, trams. You have tram, you can determine your transport fare for a whole month. But here, government will ban before they begin to bring alternatives. Okay. There are accidents on Okada. There are accidents on our cars. There are accidents on bad roads. 
So which one should we treat first? Yes. There needs to be a holistic approach to it, and not just this knee-jerk yeah. approach that we like. And at the end of the day, you say, wait, the palliatives will come later, and mm. they never come. Mm. I think that, um, I mean, Liberos, you just kind of, um, you know, echoed what, what I was thinking. Um, I will say that it was, it was necessary to do something of the Okada, because they were becoming a menace. Yes, yes. Uh, it will amaze yeah. you that my wife says to me, I'm like, why do you have a katana? Katana is a Japanese sword. Why do you have it in your car? It says, de one, eh? yeah, it's a deterrent. Because to have one. I, don't, I don't. Yeah, because of the menace of because Okada. Because one day they almost, you know, assaulted me. Wow. And until I brought the thing out, then we had equal balance of terror. Yes. And I'm not. I'm clearly as mad as you. Yes, that's what I was going to say. But it, they're a menace. But I thought there was a better way to handle the menace. You know, so it's graduated. Yeah. And that's the role of government. Impact analysis. Right. What will happen if we take this decision? Yeah. And what are the palliatives? Mm -hmm. You know, and can we sequence this? Manage this transition Can we do period. this here right. in Ikeja? Test it. Mm -hmm. Can we move to Shomolu? Can we do this? So you test it. And to, to come up with such a broad plan that's clearly disruptive, I think that's the word. We yeah. saw what happened. We're seeing it, mm. the, the consequences of that. And, and even the public communication tools to manage it yes. were not well structured. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, do I want a city without Okada? Uh, yes. yes. I, I, will, I, will, I will go for that. Yes. I will go for better transport systems because they were clearly a security menace. I mean, we're looking at this, but the security aspect is actually... Um, Fiasum, I don't know if you saw um, uh, Area Father Charlie Boy's comments on Facebook and, and Twitter this morning. Where so, he talked is that about his name, Area Father? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Where he talked about speaking with some um, um, uh, gentleman who is his house who coordinates, who knows a little bit about saying that these people were fundamentalists, that somebody's yeah, paying you have a to, lot of them. Yeah, somebody's yes. paying them to, giving to them money in. to come into Lagos. Yeah. And well, they, they were like sloth. sleeper cells. Yes. yes. And, and, you know, it, it might sound... I have a friend but, who said that one of his gate man was um, the moment they confirmed him to be Boko Haram, you know, he, he just he ran, he, he he ran away. Mm. But the, the solution to the problem is not a tried ban. Mm. Like you said, you ban them, you identify that these people restrict. are Boko Haram. And so you have bound them or you restrict them. Mm. But there is a big question. They are Boko Haram. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? They will go somewhere else. Exactly. Where, where are they going to go? Mm. Yeah. So if we all ban Okada, you know, wouldn't they move into? They're already here. They'll move into something else. Yeah, so how do you take a census restriction. of these people? Why don't you take a census of them, do a registration yeah, that would have before been you now? So you have the data. Led. You just say, oh, yeah, we know that these people are a menace and mm -hmm. then security threats, so we ban you. And yet you can't flush them out of the country. You can't ban insecurity. It's intelligent. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's intelligent. intelligent. We, we, you, can't, yeah. you can't proclaim. I ban insecurity and yeah. then insecurity yeah. goes away. Yeah. It's not done. But That's I must admit, challenge. the roads are more peaceful. Even if there's traffic, <laughs> the I'm loving it so yes. much. Yeah. See, yeah. elite speaking. Yeah. Elite yeah. 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 Like yeah. Yeah. people, yeah. elite. Yeah. Yeah. elite I, but I'm not afraid yeah. of the yeah. yeah. because yeah. I know I'm not elite. I'm, I'm uh, a human uh, of the people. You, you see, well, you won't know when you're exposing your elitist tendencies. That would really deposited a lot of hardship on the average Nigerian. You know, this morning when I came in, I was interacting with um, one of the ladies, and she was just discussing, talking about the hardship of getting to the office on a daily basis. I mean, on on Monday, it's you know, Nigerians or Lagosians really felt the effects fully on Monday. People, my colleagues, were getting home at past 11 p.m. and leaving the leaving the houses as early as 5 a.m. just to beat yeah, to time. Me. And yeah. the traffic. So this is the consequence of yeah. of, the, of the of the alternative. Mm. I mean, so. I really don't see how this is going to make Lagos better, or this is how to. Yeah. Going I mean, to I make know I, I, Lagos we don't tell stories on so. both sides, but I know someone who was gunpoint, somebody on an account, monitoring her in traffic, circling her. Finally, she had a gunpoint, give me your bag. And she's just petrified. She doesn't know how she managed. She had seen them circling, so she took her passport and whatever under her seat. And that's how she escaped. They're taking her passport and travel allowance. Mm. The fact they can do it at 1 in the afternoon on a jack stretch tells you that. Hmm. You're dealing with something. Who on this tra traffic? You both people drive rob also. Yeah. No, but this one can get away rob, because there are motorbikes. Yeah. Yeah. No, but this guy has a motorbike, so he's able you to know? make a fast exit with your yeah. bike. It's not quite the same. Well, Ekene, you've had your go, so now it's my turn. So after the break, I'll be looking at again at the Keke and Okada pandemonium from a different angle. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely. 
and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.